Hey everybody, this is Chris with the Ancient Scholar. I hope you're doing well. I just uh, wanted to post a quick video response. I uh, was at the gym uh, working out real hard. I just actually, actually just finished a 10-mile uh, uh, bike ride on single, nice single-track trails. I got my first ever mountain bike race coming up on Sunday, so in two days. It's a, I think it's going to be a 12-mile, 12, 12 or 15-mile race on single track just outside of Las Cruces. Uh, so I've been uh, working hard. I've lost a lot of weight over the past several months, bought a new mountain bike. I, I, basically, I'm, I'm kind of uh, basically middle-aged now, and I'm going through a midlife crisis, and I think this is one of the, the ways that I'm dealing with the existential angst. Uh, but of, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, um, so I was uh, scrolling through some of my messages, uh, not messages, but uh, some of the uh, the updates that I get. Um, and I, I don't check them all the time, but I just happened to check one from, uh, from popped up on my Google Google Plus. It's a comment to one of my older videos of the introduction to crystal field theory, and I believe that the user's name and please forgive me if I uh, if I announce this incorrectly, but it's um, Hamu Sunday Brighton. I believe is how it's pronounced, Hamu Sunday Brighton. Uh, Hamu Sunday Brighton asks, uh, why, why did I say that the 4s electrons are ionized first when, when we do our electron configurations, the uh, the 4s, um, the, the 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 3d orbitals. Uh, would seem to have a higher energy than the 4s, and and shouldn't we uh, ionize from the uh, 3d orbitals as opposed to the the 4s orbitals? And uh, the the question, the answer to that question is a it's a little little convoluted, um, and I I'm not going to be able to get into the details, of the real nitty gritty. I don't want to get into the real nitty gritty of it today. Uh, uh, maybe I can in another video. I actually kind of touched on it in a prior video from, from some years ago where I talked about uh, penetration of atomic orbitals, uh, a, a penetration of probability density, and I had some radial, uh, radial distribution plots of uh, wave functions that I talked about, and I compared and contrasted the s um, to the p orbitals. And w so one of the things that we need to understand is that these atomic orbitals are well they're not real in in the in in the in the li in a literal sense I, I i don't look at it as an a, a atomic orbital as being absolutely real it's a reflection of reality it is an approximation to reality and it is an approximation that helps us with solving certain problems and asking certain questions but there there are some metaphors that that go into the concept of an atomic orbital and I think if we it's real easy to learn when you learn these things in general chemistry that, and maybe even organic you know undergraduate chemistry when you start taking things a bit too literally um, you can run into some problems and this whole business with atomic orbitals and with filling the energy levels and with the Aufbau principle uh, in particular, if you take it too literally, it can it can really cause a lot of confusion later on. And uh, so that's the first thing is is, is um, w we need to understand. And I, I guess when we go back and we talk about atomic structure, and we talk about the fundamental equation that really opened up atomic structure for us that was of course the Schrodinger equation now when we solve the Schrodinger equation <clears throat> we get these solutions um, and the uh, solutions are these uh, discrete numbers we call atomic uh, quantum numbers and these quantum numbers um, are a way of defining or describing the uh, the state of an electron the states that electron and an electron can have in a hydrogen atom, and more generally, um, that uh, any single electron atom can have. So, the the first thing that we need to understand is the Schrodinger equation. 
can only be solved, and this is a big thing they don't tell you in chemistry, we can only solve the Schrodinger equation analytically exactly. We only have, really, we only have exact solutions for the hydrogen atom and hydrogen-like atoms, that is to say, single electron atoms, okay? Um, so in that sense, we can perhaps be a bit more literal about this whole atomic orbital concept in, in a certain sense, okay? The other thing that we need to understand is that the Schrodinger equation is not relativistic, so it doesn't take into consideration relativistic effects such as the, uh, the lanthanide contraction, for example. And when we have uh, electrons that are moving at relativistic velocities, you get uh, these interesting, uh, interesting effects that, that really alter the wave function. And that, that's part of uh, you know, why gold has, has a color that it does, why mercury is uh, liquid at room temperature. Um, so the Schrodinger equation it, it fundamentally is not relativistic. There are relativistic, uh, there is a field of, of quantum mechanics or that, that deals with the relativistic effects that came later. Um, but the, the, just the run-of-the-mill Schrodinger equation is not a relativistic equation. It does not take special relativity into consideration. And it does not take the concept of spin into consideration either. Um, the spin quantum number doesn't really fall out of the Schrodinger equation. Um, the, the spin quantum number uh, kind of came a little after the Schrodinger equation when we, we started seeing that there was some fine structure in the emission spectra of even hydrogen. And um, of course, the subsequent experiments, the, the Stern-Gerlach experiment and all that, um, really pointed to the fact that there is this, this concept we call spin, which is uh, not, doesn't really literally have to do with an electron spinning, but in, in some sense you, you could conceptualize it as a type of spin, a type of... Um, kind of a, like an intrinsic type of angular momentum. But, but anyway, that, that spin is a kind of state, if you will, a kind of quantum state, um, up, down, plus one half, minus one half, whatever. Um, and that it fundamentally alters the, inner, the spin of an electron, what spin that electron may have relative to other electrons also fundamentally alters the energy levels. Um, and then perhaps most importantly is the fact that the Schrodinger equation cannot uh, be solved analytically for multi-electron atoms. And so the best that we can do at this point with solving wave functions for multi-electron atoms is um, we have to use different types of approximation and perturbation theory uh, common approximations, of course, are the, um, the, the Born-Oppenheimer approximation where um, to eliminate some terms from the Schrodinger equation, we kind of we say that the nucleus of, of the atom that we're looking at is fixed. It doesn't move, even though it does, but relative to the electrons that, that are moving around it, we will just say, okay, it doesn't move. And then that's a, the, uh, that's a term that that's an energy term that you don't really have to deal with um, and so that can simplify the calculations you have to do and then the uh, the other thing that we do is we kind of if I want to look at an electron in a certain state what, what I'll do relative to other electrons what, what we can do in a sense is kind of look at all the other electrons as kind of forming this cloud of, of, of charge around the nucleus or a field of charge around the nucleus. Uh, we can kind of throw all the other electrons into this cloud, if you will, and then just focus in on the wave function of, of, of the, the electron that uh, the state, the wave function that, that we're, we're most concerned with. And this is something known as a self-consistent field. Um, it, it forms something known as Hartree-Fock, a uh, Hartree-Fock approximation. And, and from that, we can get these um, these atomic orbital approximations. And um, 
we can more or less reproduce the periodic table, the periodicity, the periodic table of elements. We can more or less reproduce that uh, pretty well uh, within, I, I was like 10, 10%, maybe probably even, I don't know the exact percentage of, of, of reality of, of uh, what it predicts versus what we can measure. Um, but, you know, it's, I don't know, 10, 20% maybe a little more um you know so it's kind of a you know it's it's a way of getting in the ballpark and at least you can reproduce the trends and then there are other 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 theories of, of what we call electronic structure theories where we can do other things and i'm not at all well versed in any of this so i'm not qualified to really probably not even qualified to say what i've already said um but Anyway, to get back to my point, because I've been rambling, I believe, that the point is that this simplified Aufbau principle, where we draw the little lines, and okay, it fills this way, is, is just not right. And it's not really to be taken literally. It helps us, it's, it's a helpful tool when you're, when you're talking about you know, you have an atom, you have iron or whatever, and well, what's the electron configuration of iron? It, it helps you identify that electron configuration, but beyond that, it, it breaks down. And when you talk about predicting, well, you know, uh, what what's the first ionization energy, and you know, is it going to be the 4s electron or the 3d electron that gets ionized? Um, it doesn't make good predictions of, uh, regarding that so it's a it's I look at the Aufbau principle as kind of a tool for getting that configuration but beyond that it's not all that helpful um, so I, I I don't know if I answered your question but basically um, the 4s in in an actual atom that has actual electrons and you have all the um, the interactions of the electrons and you have uh, spin interactions um, you have to take into account uh, penetration or probability density in the in screening you know how much screening does a certain orbital have as, as opposed to another and even the nuclear charge you know what's the effective nuclear charge how what's the average size of the atom and and you know what's the average distance at a, an orbital? What's the radial probability distribution? Um, if you're talking about D, uh, P, P, D, e, F orbitals, um, you have angular. Uh, you have an angular a component, and you have nodes. You have angular nodes as well as radial nodes in those. And you've got to take all of these concepts that can't be taken too literally into consideration, and you just have this big freaking mess. To be quite honest. Um, but at the end of the day, um, you can look at the Aufbau principle as a way of okay, this is initial getting you know my configuration. But but once once th these atoms are full, um, the the 4s orbital in the particular case that I'm talking about uh, does have a higher energy level. The electrons in that state um, are generally going to be at a higher energy. So when you ionize the thing, you will lose the 4s electrons before the 3d electrons, even though that 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 kind of defies this intuition that you may have developed when you first learned about um, um, filling atomic orbitals or create or build an atom. Um, I don't know if that's completely satisfactory. I hope that I answered the question, or at least, um, at least I, I got you to realize or, or facilitated uh, additional research into the subject, or you know, facilitated some realization that oh, okay, um, the, the Aufbau principle um, has some serious flaws, and um, beyond getting that initial electron configuration, it may not be a a real. Uh, a helpful tool when it comes to more complex predictions. Um, so I hope that makes sense. And uh, please go ahead and, if you have additional questions, and, and maybe 
maybe what 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 I need to do is just do some videos dedicated to talking about this subject. If if people would find that them interesting and helpful, um, I'd be more happy to do that. I could also provide some links. I believe Doctor uh, is it Scary Scary, um, who is a uh, he, he does a lot with the periodic table. He, he he's done some lectures. He he's actually talked. Uh, he, he's got some really good, um, really good discussions about this topic as well. Um, so maybe I could reference some uh, links uh, to his material, and that may be helpful as well. I don't know. Let me know. Let me don't know down in the uh, the comments if you guys want to pursue this topic in a little more detail, and maybe we can do a series of videos on it. But anyway, I, I hope at least pointed you in the right direction toward getting a more satisfactory answer but it was a great question and I'm glad that we were able to bring it up here and and uh, facilitate some higher order learning okay guys as always thanks for hanging in there